Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. Today we're going to make some Anasazi beans. Now, these beans uh, I've known about for probably 15 or 20 years, and I always wanted to make some, and every time I looked them up on the internet, they cost a lot, and then I had to have them shipped to me. So, anyway, to make a long story short, yesterday when we were in uh, Whole Foods Market, I was just looking at the dried beans and I spotted them. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make some of these Anasazi beans. Now, we visited, well, let me show you what they look like. Oops, sorry. Show you what they look like. Whoop. Can you see? And they're very much like a pinto bean, or at least that's my understanding. I dropped one. All right, okay. So they're very much like a, a pinto bean, is my understanding. And, uh, but they don't have as much of that thing, ole, whatever it is, that causes gas that comes from the pinto beans. So what I'm gonna do is uh, boil them for about 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna leave them soaking in that water for an hour or so. Now, all the directions say to soak them overnight, but they say that about pintos too, and I don't soak my pintos. It just takes too much time and too much forethought and, you know, all that. So, anyway, what I'm going to do is boil them for about 10 minutes. Go ahead and turn my water on. And um, then I'm going to let them soak for an hour, I don't know, maybe two hours. Then I'm going to cook them just like I would cook pintos. Now, these beans... Uh, according to the records, show that they're about 1,500 years old. So they're probably a distant cousin of the pinto bean. But these were uh, grown by the Anasazi Indians, and I'm, I'm sure that's why they call them Anasazi beans. But in some places they call them Appaloosa beans, after the Appaloosa horse, which has markings just like the beans. See it? Can y'all see that? Yeah. So, uh, and then there are other names for them too. But anyway, the uh, Anasazi were the cliff dwellers, and uh, we visited that area around Four Corners in uh, Colorado, let's see, Utah, New Mexico, and I don't know the other one. Anyway, four states. And uh, so anyway, when we visited, of course, we saw all the cliff dwellings and everything, but the uh, site that really fascinated me more than the cliff dwellings was the uh, dugout huts that they did in the ground. And the one we did, well, we visited a couple of them, but one in particular was about, I'd say, 9 by 12, dug out in the ground. It was probably, mm, let me guess and say, 8 to 10 feet deep. And that's the way they kept warm. They had a little fire in the middle, and then they had a roof over it with a little hole in it for the smoke to go out, and a ladder. And that's where they lived. They were like dugouts, is what they were. And uh, I was just fascinated by all of that. But when we visited Mesa Verde, it was, uh, they'd had a fire. And uh, so on the way up to Mesa Verde on that mountain, you could see all down the mountain was just burned to smithereens. It was just no trees, nothing. It was just burned. And uh, so anyway, we stayed there uh, at that, uh, I don't know, it's a little hotel there um, on Mesa Verde. And the thing we noticed was, I guess because of the elevation, we, were, we had trouble going to sleep that night because we were short of breath because I guess we weren't used to the altitude. But anyway, uh, from our window, uh, and all of these, they were like cabin kind of things, not really a hotel, more of a uh, cabin type thing. And uh, no air conditioning, of course you didn't need air conditioning, but we were there in the summertime. But from our window, when we got up the next morning, we could see Ship Rock in Monument Valley. I couldn't believe it. I kept looking at it and saying, is that Ship Rock? And it was. I mean, it was almost 100 miles. You could see it. So, and the other site that we saw was some deer came out feeding kind of out. It was really like a slide door in a little balcony. And uh, the deer were out there. There were some wildflowers and stuff growing right outside the little cabin type thing. 
and the deer were eating out the feeding out there in the morning it, they were pitiful they had ticks big ticks all over their backs oh it was just gross but i mean they were they were still up walking around uh but i don't know they had all these ticks on them and uh but anyway they weren't really afraid of humans apparently because they were out there feeding but um, anyway, back to Mesa Verde. So it's a site where they, they, uh, the uh, Anasazi grew a lot of their own food, those cliff dwellers, and then the uh, dugout hut, I think they call them dugouts. Uh, they also lived in those, some of the, the tribe. But anyway, they think that what happened to the Anasazi is they just, uh, migrated in into an area uh, they think because of drought is why they left and uh, the Ute Indians consider Mesa Verde uh, and where the uh, the cliff dwellings are uh, to be a sacred uh, ground for their ancestors but anyway uh, they think that they just kind of went in with the Ute Indians and that's really what happened to them they just kind of migrated into uh, other Indian tribes when they left the cliff dwellings, but they grew stuff down in those valleys and these beans were one of them. So anyway, we're going to fix them today. I've wanted to do this for a long time. I just wasn't willing to pay the price they were charging over the internet. But anyway, at Whole Foods, I got eight ounces for $2.14. So I thought, you know, and I didn't have to pay shipping. So that was certainly okay. But anyway, here's what they look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, make sure that there are no rocks or anything like, or any bad beans in them. And I don't think they are because I kind of looked over them a little bit a while ago. So, let's see a half bean. I always just take out the little half beans. By the way, let me insert another little quick story here while we're here. I got these knives uh, the other day at Bed Bath & Beyond, and they're the ceramic knives. And I've got to tell you, they cut like a dream. They really do. They are super sharp. I don't know if you can see this. You can actually see through this little bottom section if you hold it up to the light. And, of course, they give you a little uh, guard to go on them. And it's a really good thing because the first time I used this knife, I cut my finger. That's why I've got a little band-aid on it. And what happened was I had it out and I was uh, peeling some mangoes. And all I did was just barely touch my finger right there. And it sliced my finger open. I mean, it sliced it deep, too. So anyway, uh, I don't know if y'all have experienced that or not with these knives, but be careful because they are super, super sharp. And one of the things that I really super like about this one, the bigger one, is I was able to slice some bread really thin with it. So I'm thinking it would be great for, you know, cutting uh, real thin pieces of turkey and ham and whatever. Anyway. Bed Bath & Beyond is where I got these, and uh, you do have to keep the cover on them, like if they're in the drawer, because you will cut yourself, just like I did. And so, uh, anyway, I got these at Bed Bath & Beyond, and I think a lot of people have this kind, but they're guaranteed for, to stay sharp for five years, and believe me, I believe them. All right, back to the beans. So I'm going to... Uh, rinse these beans off and then I'm going to put them down in the boiling water which I've already got going over here. Alright, so I don't have to cut my camera off. Y'all can just watch my water boil. I'll be right back. rinsing them off really sharpens up that color. Aren't they pretty? All right, so my water's boiling, so I'm going to go ahead and dump them in. 
and I'm going to just boil them for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to cut the burr off and just leave them sitting here for maybe one hour for sure, maybe two. All right, but we're going to find out how this all works. So we'll be back in a little while. Okay, our beans have actually soaked for about three hours. They're still kind of warm. See how dark the water turned? All right, so I'm going to go drain these, and we'll be back in just a second. We'll drain them and rinse them off. Okay, I drained the beans and added some water to them. I want to show you what they look like soaked. Take them up closer. Y'all see what they look like? Now, I'm probably only going to have to cook them for about an hour since they soaked for, you know, longer than I planned. So I'm not going to put salt in them because I know that makes hulls of beans really um, tough. So what I'm going to put in there this is one whole bulb of garlic, and I just like it in big, slicey chunks, you know? So I'll put that in. And I'm going to put, uh, this is a pretty big red onion, just chopped kind of big. And these were previously frozen bell peppers, so I'm just going to jump those in. That's probably about a, about a cup, really. Uh, uh, chopped green bell peppers. All right, so now we, all we're going to do is put the lid on them and let them cook for about an hour. Now I probably need to go ahead and put in some olive oil. I've left my spigot running over there. Not good. All right, I'm just going to use some uh, extra light olive oil. Maybe just a couple of, uh, well, that one's not open wrong bottle. All right, here it is. Just the extra light olive oil, just a couple of tablespoons. And what that will do is keep them from boiling up and boiling over, really. All right, so I'm going to put the lid on these and cook them for about an hour is my guess. Then I'll put salt in them and uh, we'll be ready to have some of these. So we'll be back in a little while. All right, the uh, Anasazi beans are done, I'm pretty sure. They cooked for about an hour. Now, I think I really uh, soaked them too long. I think you shouldn't probably even, even though some of the directions say soak them overnight. But anyway, I was reading up on them a little more, and I found out that uh, in the Southwest, and of course in Mexico, they turn these into refried beans, and I thought that sounds like a great idea, since I've already got the pepper, onion, and the garlic in there. So anyway, here's what they look like. They sort of turn more of a pink color, and I would describe them as a very mild pinto. That's how I would describe them. Let you look at some more of them. Yeah, so I'm going to definitely turn them into refried beans because we love refried beans with uh, cheese, you know, to serve as a side dish. But anyway, so here they are. These are Anasazi uh, beans, and they're a, a relative of the pinto, a very distant relative. Uh, they found some of these beans, uh, it's told, I don't know if that's legend or not, in um, a pot in some of the uh, uh, cliff dwellers' uh, places, and uh, they actually sprouted them. They, could, they still grew. So anyway, that's the story. I don't know how true that is or not. But anyway, so here you have it, Anasazi beans. And I'm going to turn them into refried beans, refried beans tomorrow because we like refried beans on tortillas or uh, served, uh, you know, just as a side dish with some, some other uh, meal. And I like to put cheese on them. All right, so we'll see you all next time.